Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies. And today, for the first time, I'm going to talk about 10 hidden gem movies you can currently catch on Disney+. So if you're like me, you got Disney Plus because you have kids, and you start to realize that even though Disney has a ton of content, you can burn through it pretty quickly, or at least the ones that everyone knows about. I'm talking about Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, the Pixar stuff. We burn through all of that stuff too many times in the first few months of Disney Plus, but there's so much content there. This list is gonna feature 10 movies that a lot of you have likely not seen now. Because it is Disney, these are gonna be more well-known than most of my hidden gem list, meaning there will be several on this list that you likely saw as a kid, depending on what age you are, but these are lesser known movies, so this list is pretty guaranteed to at least have a few movies on it that you've never heard of that you can currently catch on Disney+. Plus. This video is sponsored by Universal Yums. Later in the video, I'll tell you about their new holiday package that is great to buy for yourself or as a gift. But let's go ahead and start with an honorable mention and then we'll move on to the top 10. And that honorable mention is The Reluctant Dragon. Now this one is the oldest one on the list. It comes from 1941 and it's not quite a movie, which is why it is not included on the list. This actually focuses on sort of the making of movies. And keep in mind, this was done in 1941. So this is sort of the world's first look at the animation process. This is the first time a lot of people ever saw how a lot of this stuff was made. And it's fun, it's interesting. It is very dated though. It's not gonna necessarily engage everybody. But if you find the concept of seeing people in the 1940s do animation, this is very interesting. And then what makes it really fantastic is the last 20 minutes or so is an animated movie about a reluctant dragon that's very fun to watch. And again, 1941, we're talking like pre-World War II, and this animated short, we'll say, looks fantastic. It's really fun to watch with the kids. So you can even fast forward and only watch the reluctant dragon part, which is the tail end of this feature, but I do find all the making of stuff really interesting leading up to it. And with that, let's get on to some real movies. So my number 10 pick on this list is Home on the Range. Now this came out in 2004 and it features a ton of voices, Roseanne Barr, Cuba Gooding Jr., Dame Judi Dench, and Steve Buscemi. And they're all doing voices of these barnyard animals that are trying to save the farm from this kind of evil land developer. The thing I like about this one is not just that it's a good Disney story, and it is, it is that, but the animation style is kind of un-Disney. It's a little bit exaggerated. It's kind of artistic in a kind of a fun, kind of wild way. Now, Disney has done other movies like this. In fact, if you think of something like from the 50s, like Sleeping Beauty, it had more sort of geometric backgrounds and stuff that I find really cool. They explore that a little bit here in Home on the Range, which is why I think this one sort of stands out. And it is one that is lesser known, again, kind of depending on when you grew up. My number nine pick is G-Force. Now the G in this one stands for guinea pig. I don't think it's gerbil, they're too, they're too big to be gerbils. But it's about this team of guinea pigs that are like this elite force of spies. This feels very much like a Michael Bay action movie done for kids. In addition to that, it's got voices of some actors that I love, like Sam Rockwell, Penelope Cruz, Tracy Morgan, Steve Buscemi again. Just kind of a fun movie. Now, I would not consider this one to be a good movie, but it is very, very fun to watch. There's some live action characters that interact with these guinea pigs, including Zach Galifianakis and Will Arnett. So the movie is very funny. And it's also a good movie for people who really enjoy those types of spy movies because it pokes fun at them in a fun, engaging way. It's kind of a spoof, but at the same time, I could see where if you don't really like watching action and spy movies, you're not gonna get a lot of the jokes and references in this one, so it may not be as enjoyable. But if you love the way that this one looks and it looks like fun, I'm telling you, it is a lot of fun. It's, it's surprising how fun this movie actually is. 
Now my next pick is actually directed by an Academy Award winning director, Danny Boyle. He's most famous for movies like Train Spotting, 28 Days Later, Sunshine. So dark, heavy movies, but this is actually a PG rated movie about a little boy that finds a million pounds. We're in England in this one, but it's on sort of the eve of the adoption of the Euro. And so him and his friends need to spend it all before it becomes just paper. Now, this one, while it is PG and it is accessible and it is ultimately pretty family friendly. There is a heist that takes place. Some guys discard this money and then they come after it. So there's kind of a frightening element for very, very young kids because this movie does feel very real. It's directed by Danny Boyle. Again, someone who's sort of known for darker material. You got some bad guys coming after these kids for this money. So it can be a little bit upsetting if you've got really young kids. So I'd be careful of that. But this is a very sort of un-Disney, almost thriller type of a thing. It's not really silly and fun. It's very grounded and feels very real, but it's ultimately a very good story. And of course, Danny Boyle just delivers it very, very well in this movie. Now, my number seven pick is a movie that Disney kind of wants to forget. This is probably the darkest one on this list and they have no characters from this movie in any of their theme parks. For the longest time, this one would not be released on DVD or Blu-ray or anything, but it's available on Disney Plus, and that is The Black Cauldron. Now, this one is extremely dark. It's one of Disney's animated movies, and for some reason, they were in the middle of a management change, and they decided to do this extremely dark movie that cost a ton of money, took years and years, and then suddenly management changes and they bring in the guy that sort of ushered in the era of the Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, all of that stuff. And he basically shut this movie down. He made major changes to it to soften it, but it is still extremely grim. There are demons, there's this dark lord that really sort of, I mean, I'm, I'm a grown man and watch a lot of dark movies. You know that if you're a longtime subscriber. There were moments in this movie that gave me the chills. But it is really cool. I would be very careful of watching this with very young kids. Any metalheads that are watching, this is a pretty cool flick. I mean, yeah, there are fairies and stuff in it, but there's some wild stuff. It almost looks like a metal music video at times. It's that wild. So Disney kind of wanted to forget that this movie even existed. But it seems that with time, they sort of embraced it as this sort of ugly duckling type of a movie. And it's got some cool elements to it. While I don't recommend it for everybody, if the way I've described sort of the backstory interests you, it's well worth checking out. And then my number six pick is a good example of one that I know a lot of you probably are familiar with, but there's a lot of you that are not, again, depending on sort of when you grew up. But James and the Giant Peach is an excellent movie. This is done in stop motion animation, and it's got kind of a dark style, very, very similar to The Nightmare Before Christmas, which is also available on Disney Plus, in case you didn't notice. But James and the Giant Peach is based on a book by Roald Dahl, who's a very famous writer, and the style of this one I think is just absolutely fantastic. It actually opens up with live action characters, and if you're familiar with his writing, it's all fairly dark stuff. I loved this movie as a kid. It's just a great adventure story for young kids, but it does have some scary elements. There's this rhinoceros in the sky that looks like a storm with red eyes. Pretty terrifying stuff, again, for very, very young kids, but if you've got kids that are a little bit older, this could be a really great watch. Now, before moving on to the top five on this list, I do wanna tell you about the Universal Yums Holiday Package. Now, Universal Yums has been a sponsor of the show for quite a while, and they're a fantastic snack service. You just use the link in the description and you can sign up for one of three different box sizes at three different price points, and every month, they give you a new box full of snacks from a different country. I've had a blast with this one. It's a ton of fun. Not only do me and my wife enjoy the snacks because they're always something new and interesting I've never tried before, completely new flavor profiles in a lot of cases, but there's also a lot of interactive stuff that comes in the box. So it's an experience in a box and you can give it as a gift or buy it for yourself for the holidays. Go to the link in the description, check out the holiday option. You can pick the different price points. You can also pick how many boxes 
your friend or loved one gets as a gift. You can give them just one, one time in December, or you can sign them up for three, six, or 12 months, depending on how generous you wanna be. But the holiday box comes with snacks from multiple countries, so it sort of mixes it up a little bit. I'm looking forward to getting mine in the mail. If you're interested in giving one as a gift or giving one to yourself, again, check out that link in the description. If you know somebody that sort of has everything and doesn't need more stuff, this is a great gift because they're gonna end up eating it all and they're probably gonna enjoy it more than most other things you might think to buy them. Now my number five pick is from 1954, so it's the second oldest one on this list, and it is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now this one is probably the more well-known movie on this list, but I bet a lot of you didn't even know it was available on Disney Plus because it just doesn't rise to the top. It's not in their recommended movies, but it's there. And I have rewatched it since Disney Plus was released, and I love this movie. The only thing to keep in mind with it is that because it was made in 1954, audiences were very different then. They were much more patient than they are now. So it is a slower build, but you do still get some amazing sequences in this one, some beautiful shots, and there's some underwater shots that are just amazing, especially for the time. For me, this would be a great one to watch with kids that are maybe a little bit older and sort of explain to them the difference in how movies were made over 50 years ago, almost 70 years ago, versus today. And also this is based on a very classic book. So another good way to consume some classic literature and maybe broaden the horizons of kids that are sort of getting old enough to watch a giant squid attack a bunch of men on a submarine. Now from 1979, I've got a similar recommendation with the black hole. This is a space adventure that does look very dated. It does look like it comes from the 70s. You compare this to a movie that also came out in 79 that is not for kids, like Alien and it looks very, very dated. It's got a 70s look to it, but it's also got a really cool look to it. You've got these people that find this spaceship out near a black hole, but the sets look cool. They're definitely trying to mimic Star Wars because this did come out a few years after the first Star Wars was released. And this is again, long, long before Disney owned Star Wars. And it's nowhere near as good as the original Star Wars movies, but it still is this amazing space adventure with a lot of explosions, special effects. There are a couple of upsetting moments. There's a robot that does kill some people. While there's not a lot of blood or anything like that, PG was a little more intense for a period there before they invented the PG-13 rating. This one edges into some pretty intense territory, so again, you probably wanna go with kids that are a little bit older on this one, but I watched this one with my almost five-year-old and he absolutely loved it. Now we're in the top three and we get to like three of my personal all-time favorite movies that are on Disney Plus right now. My number three pick is Iron Will. This is from 1994 and it's about a dog sled race. This is a very Jack London sort of story and it's a really fantastic adventure. In a similar vein, they also have White Fang with Ethan Hawke on Disney Plus, but I felt like that one was a little more well known and Iron Will is kind of a better story because it focuses on this sled race. When I was a kid, I was able to follow this one a lot better. There's some intense moments in this one as well, but again, it's PG. There's not gonna be blood or anything too graphic. There is a pack of dogs that does attack one of the characters in the movie at some point, but a very good sort of uplifting, you know, achievement type of a movie, sort of a sports movie without really the sports. I love it, it's really well shot, it's got a good look to it, and again, it will broaden your kids' horizons because odds are they maybe not know anything about sled races or anything like that, and it just gives them a window into another part of the world, and I absolutely loved this one when I was growing up. I think I was about 10 when this one came out, and it was perfect for me at that age. Now, one year later, another one of, this one is still one of my favorites, I own it. Let me, let me see. 12 seconds later. Yeah, that didn't take long. I actually own a copy of Heavyweights. I have always loved this movie. I find it to be hilarious. This is actually produced by Judd Apatow, who went on to do, you know, some of the better comedies of the last, you know, 20 years, like the 40-year-old version. But this is a Disney movie about some kids that go to a camp. It's called a fat camp in the movie, but it's a camp to sort of help kids lose weight, which is a thing. So be aware, there are some pretty insensitive jokes in this one. There are a lot of jokes poked at 
being overweight as a kid. In fact, that's maybe half the jokes in this movie, but it ultimately does have a very sort of uplifting, positive vibe to it. But in addition to that, it has one of Ben Stiller's best performances. He plays this camp counselor that came in and bought the camp, and he is an absolute maniac. When I was a kid, I thought this was a funny movie because the kids are funny and there's a lot of fart jokes and stuff like that in it. And it is, it is a funny movie. But I didn't realize until I got older and I watched it some more how insane Ben Stiller's performance is. It is wild and it has made me appreciate it as an adult. Again, keep in mind, very young kids, there's gonna be some things they'll learn in this movie that you probably don't want them repeating on the kindergarten playground. But kids that are a little bit older, like the kids in the movie, they should really get a kick out of this one, I think. I'd be surprised if, if kids today didn't still think this movie was funny. And in addition to that, it does have a very good message of just sort of positivity and, and, and self, have, you know, having good sense of self-esteem. I think that is very good for kids as well. But just be cautious as to what age the kids are. I don't mean to harp on that too much, but don't be surprised when you watch that movie and there's some really inappropriate jokes in it. Now, my number one pick is so interesting to me because I find a lot of the sequels that Disney creates to some of their hit movies to just be for lack of a better word, awful. If you didn't know that Disney Plus didn't sponsor this video by now, now you know. But one that really stands out to me as a sequel that's even better than the original is The Rescuers Down Under. Now the original Rescuers came out in 1977 and it is a good movie, but it does feel very dated. Rescuers Down Under came out in 1990 and it's got a very different pace. It starts off with this beautiful sort of fast paced thing. It's got a very sort of intense nature to it. It's beautifully animated. I mean, really, some of the best looking stuff Disney has ever put out alongside like the Lion King. Really fantastic stuff. And it's about these two mice that go to save this little boy, very much like they did in the original Rescuers. But it's a fantastic adventure in Australia. There's all sorts of animals. Again, sort of an educational purpose there. You can teach your kids about all the different animals in Australia versus the rest of the world because they're very present in this movie. But you get these mice that are going to rescue this kid and they're saving him from the clinches of this poacher voiced by none other than George C. Scott. Yeah, that's right. George C. Scott, the guy who played Patton, he does the voice of the villain. I think he's one of the better villains in a Disney movie. John Candy replaces the albatross in this one, and I love John Candy's character. You only get him a couple of times. But just a fantastic adventure movie. Again, some scenes a little intense for very, very young kids, but still just a fantastic adventure movie that I think the whole family will enjoy. I hope, I sincerely hope a bunch of you have never seen that because you're gonna dig it. You're gonna like it a lot, I think. And at the very least, I hope you found several movies that you didn't know were on Disney Plus and you get a little bit more bang for your buck out of that platform. That is why I'm here. Let's take a quick moment to thank the Patreon supporters. They are the reason I put out videos like this one. When I make a video like this one that I've never made before, I can do it because I get financial support from boosters like these folks you're looking at their names right now. So if you're feeling generous, give them a shout out in the comments below or check out the link in the description and become a Patreon supporter yourself. However you choose to support the channel, even if it's just with likes, comments, and shares, it is greatly appreciated because I do need likes, comments, and shares in order to do another Disney Plus video, but I will keep making my video list as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this Disney Plus episode, and you will see me on the next one.